Hey, everybody. How's it going? Hope you're uh, having a great Thanksgiving week and getting ready for the holiday. I'm sure some of you are off this week and good for you if you are. Some of us are not off this week. Some of us are working and trying to get five days worth of week done in three days. But hey, that's the that's the fun of it. But welcome to uh, Thanksgiving week and I just a state final week and uh, very, very excited. Now, I'm not going to lie, a little excited, and a little, little bummed out because the season's come and gone so fast and it's ending this weekend. But uh, again, all good things must come to an end and this season will come to an end and the end of a really strange year. And I'm sure you don't need me to continue on and, and tell you how strange things have been. But uh, uh, these teams, when they finish over the weekend on Friday and Saturday, they will they will have played in, in hopefully most cases 20 games in a year. And that is a lot of football. And we'll we'll go on and we'll talk in the offseason about how, was it too many games and what could have been done differently. But for now. We're just going to celebrate the IHSA State Finals and uh, just give you some thoughts in Class 6A. And I'm really excited about 6A. I'm not going to lie to you. This, this is a matchup I've been looking forward towards since, I'll say, well before, well before, you know, things really got going with the season. Um, Carrie Grove taking on East St. Louis. And, and if you had followed 6A at all this year, to me, those two stood out like a sore thumb. They really did. Just, you know, knowing how 6A and below is geographically seated, you knew that there was no way that Kerry Grove was going to wind up in the same bracket as East St. Louis. Uh, both are two very different styles of football. Both are highly effective and, and highly successful programs as well. Um, and, I just find the, the matchup incredibly intriguing every time East St. Louis runs into one of the Fox Valley teams, whether it be Cary or Prairie Ridge. Um, it's 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 a chess game, and it's a fun chess game to watch. So let's get into this. So my thoughts, um, Cary Grove has been just incredible is the, is the only way really to describe it. They're averaging in the 40s per game primarily running the ball, very capable of throwing it with play action with uh, Jamison Sheehan, who, again, it's in a lot of other years, I, I think I think he would have been possibly a Mac level quarterback. But again, with the whole COVID thing and recruiting and transfer portal, it's it's been a weird recruiting time for kids in this class. And I think Jamison I'm hoping winds up at the D2 level because he's a terrific athlete. Big kid, 6'4", I don't know, 205, 210. Um, really good arm, live arm, um, and, a, and a really good athlete. And, again, he's running a double wing and an option offense, so he manages the offense really well. He is a threat running the ball as well, so he can he can pull off a fake here and then and a boot and, and, and you know, you got to honor his ability to run the football because when he does, he's very capable. He's a very good athlete overall. Um, you always have great backfields at Cary Grove. You always have great line play. And, again, what's interesting about this Cary Grove team is this is not the biggest of teams that they've had, especially physically up front on the O-line and, o -line and D line. They have a handful of kids that are over 200 pounds. Um, these aren't monsters, but, boy, they are well coached. And, again, this is a system that, that these kids learn in grade school, and they carry it all through the high school level. And once they get to the varsity, this offense is is truly just, just come second nature to these kids, and, and they just execute incredibly, incredibly well. And that's been a big key to the success for Cary as well as Prairie Ridge. Um I think what makes this team different and, and part of the matchup that I'm really intrigued to see is what's been different about Kerry this year is, is, you know, you, you think option and you think grind it out and 10 play drive, 12 play drive, 15 play drives. That really hasn't been them this year. Shh, don't, don't let the common people know that, but it's a Kerry Grove offense. has been all big plays. Uh, they're, they're more inclined to pop a 60-yard run than 10 runs for six yards each. So that is, that is just a reality. So what's going to be interesting to me from the carry side is are they going to be able to continue to kind of big play against East St. Louis's defense? Maybe. Um, again, um, 
East St. Louis, very athletic, much larger up front. Um, I think I think East St. Louis's D line gets a little overlooked at times. Uh, still a very good defense. Uh, Jaree Mays, uh, defensive nose, kind of a nose defensive tackle. Terrific player, strong kid. You know, just just a no nonsense guy. Um, a lot of good talent, and the secondary is outstanding. And we're going to see how good that secondary is this week because they're definitely have to come up and play run support and something they probably haven't had to do a ton this year. So, so a lot of ifs and buts going into this as well. And and from a carry standpoint, like I said, I, I think the game plan has to be to ball control, to control time of possession, to put together the 12, 14, 16 play drives and finish with points because the longer you're doing that, and I think this is the main key of that, of that game plan is you want to limit the amount of touches East St. Louis offensively gets. And I don't, I don't know how capable this carry team is of doing it because they haven't had to do it all year. So again, interesting, interesting, interesting. So, so that's from the carry, carry Grove side. Uh, Defensively, they're very solid carry Grove. Um, Again, not overly big, but a lot of speed on the defensive side. Um, and it, again, you're talking speed versus speed. And, and, and this is at least from the skill standpoint, but what Kerry defensively is going to have to contend with is an NFL, NFL sized offensive line. And I know you guys have heard that elsewhere because I think I was like the first one who started saying that and then everyone else picked up on it, but it's a God's honest truth. You see that East St. Louis offensive line, you cannot help but think, oh, my God, these kids are gigantic. Now, gigantic, yes. Big, heavier kids, yes. Slow, no. Not at all. These are big dudes that can get out and run a little bit. This is not a slow plotting line whatsoever. They might look that way a little bit on tape, especially against kids that are maybe, I don't know, 150 pounds less than them. Not a slow offensive line at all for for East St. Louis. They can get after it. They can get out of their stance and and they can pull and they can cause a lot of havoc. And that's a that's a big time matchup for Carey defensively. Got to be able to contend with that line. Got to be able to beat East St. Louis off the ball and, and cause some kind of havoc up front. If Pop's battle has all day to throw, that's trouble because even when the passing game is in there, Pops is more than capable of running with the football. Luther Burden, you want me to keep telling you the great things of Luther Burden? If you're a Cary Grove fan, I don't think you do. <laughs> Luther is special, and he has been special all year, and he has shown up to play in every type of scenario possible and situation possible, and all the kid does is deliver. And don't kick it to him. Don't do it. Don't do it, Cary Grove. Do not kick him the football, because if you do, you're asking for a lot of trouble. Um, Plenty of talent, again, as well in the skills. Um, freshman running back, sophomore running back, sophomore receivers. The level of talent and the youth of that talent is insane. So I mentioned sophomore quarterback pops battle. It is it is a young team with a tremendous amount of talent. Now, issues. When East St. Louis has had problems in the postseason, they have generally come against teams that – kind of run option that can't put together the long drives and not give up the football and not let East St. Louis have multiple touches. A team that takes care of the football and controls the clock is not good for East St. Louis. East St. Louis will commit a lot of penalties. They will make some mistakes. Um, But again, that's part of kind of how East St. Louis is. They want to play fast. Again, all gas, no brakes. That comes from somewhere. That's the approach. That's the mindset of East St. Louis. They just want to fly around and make plays on on, on all three phases. So, again, the more touches they get, the more dangerous that offense is. But the more Kerry Grove can keep them on the sidelines, the better. So, real chess match. And, again, picking a winner, it's not going to be easy. I'll put it to you this way. The closer this game goes – and the longer we get into it, we get into a third quarter, mid-third quarter game, and we're a touchdown game here, 
the more you got to like Kerry Grove in that scenario. Um, but again, the thing to be careful about, East St. Louis can flip a switch, and next thing you know, they're up 20 on you in a heartbeat. So, yes, they're that good this year. So, again, really intrigued by 6A. I think it should be a great game. And as I mentioned, just from the chess standpoint alone, going to be great. From a talent standpoint alone, it's going to be great. you got to watch 6A. It's going to be great. Thanks, everybody. Have a great